All right, he is bored. He is back. I don't think he's broke, but here's Rigo. You'd have to check with LM. She does the books if we're broke, but because uh, I'm the last to know when it comes to that. Thank you, Todd. Um, listen, I guess where do we pick this up? It's been what did you say? Uh, uh, about December? Thanksgiving. About Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving time. Thanksgiving, like December-ish of last year when we last convened. Well, it finally, I think, as most people can appreciate, it got to the point where all you're doing in here it came in every week and basically was. You had there was nothing really good to say, and I can after a while I can only pick at a scab so long, and then you got to say, I'm turning into either a sadist or a masochist. I don't know which way it goes. So, and we were referencing the team out in Ashburn at the time because yes. it was, it was tough. It was like you say, it was uh, wasn't fun. No, it wasn't. And I, I think if I can steal a line, for, uh, paraphrase uh, uh, Will Shakespeare. From his play, Julius Caesar, I come to bury Snidely Whiplash, not to praise him. And in that sense, I will tell an interesting story that goes way back in the very beginning, and it happened at Joe Gibbs Youth for Tomorrow Gala, that I was the, 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 the speaker. The, fe I was the, the featured speaker. speaker. Correct. And I told the story. Uh, of course, uh, Snidely was in the was in the audience back, was this, back when he would attend. Twenty years ago. That's been twenty years ago. So early two thousands. I don't know when. When did they take over the team? Was it ninety nine? Ninety nine. So it was probably two thousand two thousand and one. It is. It's over twenty years ago. Anyway, now I have to set this up a little bit with a with a, a little bit of a premise here that, um, you know, when he first bought the team. He, he came under a lot of criticism nationally. I don't know if you remember this or not. Yes, he I do. A lot of stuff that was uh, avant-garde, you might say, and that wasn't good avant-garde. He was coloring outside the line. <laughs> Way outside the line. I mean, you know, it was... He, he, well, anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to delve... But I happen to be one of the few people, maybe the only one that I know of, that actually defended him in the early going. 100% you did. Mm -hmm. I remember, I think you did it on George Michael's mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, Redskins uh, yeah. report with Redskins Sonny report. and uh, Will Bond. And, and, Will Bond, I think and, Will and, Bond. and your quote was, because people were piling on quick, and you're like, mm -hmm. listen, the guy's 35, 36 years old. How many of us in this kind of position, who's to say we would make the same kind of mistakes or whatever? You did. You Yeah. <laughs> And I also said, I think that, well, look where he's got at this age. I mean, he's got to be doing something right. right. You know, he's got to know a well, little, got to have something on the ball. So let's give the guy a chance and see what happens, which actually we can apply to the new guys that are coming in. We'll discuss that in a second. But so we're at the Galen, and I'm the guest speaker, and I get to this part of where I, I, I and, and Lisa Marie, my lovely wife, told me, no, don't <laughs> tell that joke. <laughs> but I thought, no, it's too good a joke. So. But here is the joke that I told that night. And I said that, you know, back then, early 2000s, if we all recall, there was a lot of hysteria around the world as far as, uh, you know, the axis of evil and what was going on, you know, in the world of Osama bin Laden and, and all the things. And there was, you know, the hostages being taken and all this stuff. So I, I, I said that, well, and I was directing this to Snidely, saying that, you know, if you really want to get out ahead of it, you know, instead of getting in a helicopter, and this is when the team was practicing in Carlisle, or, you know, taking Redskin 1 and flying into Carlisle or wherever you fly in Harrisburg, I don't know if Carlisle had an airport for that. I said, what would, what would really be unique is if you got one of those trailers that they haul thoroughbreds around in. And, uh, you know, and, and you could very, nobody would ever suspect you have, and you can appoint a trailer like that. You could have marble, you know, a marble top desk. You could have ornate carvings. I mean, it could really be absolutely plush inside there. And I, and you know, and I, and I said that that would be, what do you call it, very low key. Nobody, who would ever expect that the owner right. of the football team is in here as opposed to your, you know, you're out taking a helicopter and all this stuff. From here up to Carlisle, I said, and nearly then there, then people would really actually. The other side of this is that there's a practical side to it, is that people could really appreciate that actually you were actually using that trailer for what it was what it was meant for, and that was hauling around a horse's ass. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that band, I got banned, banned uh, what do you call it, banished from the kingdom with that joke. But, but didn't the crowd erupt in laughing? <laughs> How'd it go with the But crowd? it was a very <laughs> measured laugh <laughs> was because it? it was funny, but people were scared to laugh. It, it and they should have been because I'm surprised that, you know, he didn't, the guys with the machine guns. Yeah, who's this into... court jester we got up here? Yeah, this guy, Riggo. Jackie. What? Jackie Riggins. <laughs> do, you, do you leave him wanting more? Yeah. Well, <laughs> anyway, so now I didn't realize this. Years later, this would have been at the 40th Super Bowl in Detroit. I had a very painful ride in a limousine with Snidely, and he still was not over that. <laughs> First of all, you would think that somebody would think the guy's got my back, and so he's just having a little fun. But this person's skin was so thin that that would have been what? 2000, uh, that would have been in 2006. Super Bowl 40 was in 2006. Yeah, that'd yeah. be about right. So you're talking about five or six years later, this is still eating him, eating away at him. And that's all we talked about on this very painful uh, limousine ride. So I guess I should, I, and I guess I knew in that moment that, you know, he is who he is, and that's the reason we're here. And I think that's the reason... And I don't want to, you know, the new, the new ownership group we can talk about in just a second. But the celebration wasn't necessarily that this town, and I don't think it was quite what it was like when, when the team won Super Bowl 17. But I got to tell you, there were a lot of fans, and it shocked me of just how, it, 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 you know, ecstatic everybody was when it finally, and it's almost two weeks now, was announced it's official. He's gone. He's out of the picture. No longer will his team be influenced by this person that actually in the perfect world, uh, if it's possible that this has what they would call the storybook ending, would see Mr. Whiplash doing about five years in a correctional institute. <laughs> and we can only hope that that possibility <laughs> still exists. I just, you know, I wake up every day. Second set of books ain't good when you mess with the man's I'm, money. I'm thinking that a second set of books, usually that, that there's some embezzlement, and I think that's a criminal offense. That's not good. So anyway, that would be that would be the best that could happen. Now, as it relates to the uh, to the new guys coming in, I happen to see their uh, press conference from what was it about? Well, uh, a, a, a freak, two week Fridays ago, Friday. ago. Mm -hmm. yeah, coming up on two Fridays. And when you think about it, I mean, it's what you do, but there's nothing really that anybody can take away from this. I mean, it, it, I think really that people. And I'm one of them, and I don't, I don't know if I consider myself a typical fan, if you will, but that you're still kind of in uh, shock over the fact that they've run, him, they've run Snidely out of town, basically, you know? And so the new guys come in, what are you going to do in a press conference? There's not a whole lot you can do. But I, so to me, it gets down to where... It's so early, you you have no idea. I mean, everybody's running with a thought it can't be as bad, and I have no reason to believe that it could ever be as close to what it was. Uh, and I think there's been some things happening, and I'll, we can discuss this down the road that would indicate that th these guys mean business, and you know they're not they're not fooling around. Um, but it would seem that some of their first orders of business, one I think, is that uh, and. You know, they're going to evaluate. I believe it was uh, Irvin Johnson that said something to the effect yeah. that we're, we're evaluating everything. So to see any significant changes um, immediately, I kind of doubt that that can happen because I think, like anything else, it takes a while for this, you know, for a new regime to come in and sure. implement itself and get, and get the lay of the land, so to speak. But I'm pretty sure these guys, considering the sec success that they've had in their careers, that they're probably pretty quick studies, and they, you know, and they probably got some people lined up. Maybe you would think if you're going oh, serious yeah, about absolutely. this, absolutely. Which you know, where when did they start their implementation of replacing people that are there? Because in, to a certain extent, and I'm sure there are some decent employees out there, but you also, it's almost like the whole, the whole franchise is tainted. And I would think that it, you know, it's going to take a special eye to be able to sort out, or you know, the wheat, the wheat from the chafe, because, like I say, there there are probably some very valuable employees out there, but there's also some people 
that are probably questionable. Well, and I think to give you an example would be one of the first things I would want to know is who's the guy that signed off on Carton, Carson Wentz last year? Who is is? And this is an interesting proposition because if you're in their scouting department, and that you know that side of the, the, are you going to tell you know your new bosses that? Well, I thought it was a terrible idea, but I was big-footed from up above. Well, that tells you something, and this is a personal situation that everybody has to put themselves in. I mean, in other words, if it were you, what would you do? You get, if it's mandated that, no, we're doing this, and you have nothing, is this where you hand in your resignation because you know, you know professionally that this is a bad and detrimental move for this franchise. Do you hand in your resignation saying, I'm not going to be a part of this. This is on you, and I'm done. You know, Pay me up to where I am, but I can't. This isn't going to happen. Or do you go along with it? Now, if you go along with it, then you end up with the taint, don't you? So, in other words, to me, that's the kind of stuff that they got to look into. Who, you know, what... And it starts at the very top. You start at the very top with your president, and you work your way on down, and, you know, you interview. I'm sure that, you know, an interview. And, and at the same time, I can't help but thinking they've got to have, one would think, if you're getting ready to spend this kind of money and take on a, uh, a job of this magnitude to recreate a franchise, uh, that you would have some ideas of people that – that you want in that place because my experience in the NFL has been and I was around enough coaching changes that usually when a head coach comes in a new head coach and you know let's compare that to a new owner they have their people they they have a clean house because the one thing about a human being that I find is that nobody wants change everybody's scared of the unknown so you bring your own people with you. That way you know exactly what you get. There may be a guy out there that looks like, whoa, this guy's got a lot of stuff going on, but I don't know enough about him. I got old Joe here. He's pretty kind. You know, he's pretty steady, knows what he's doing. Most of the time they're going to go with old Joe because they know what they're going to get. They, people don't like surprises. Well, know? and it's about trust, John. you got to bring in people Perfect that word. you know and you trust versus you've got – leftovers in a franchise and a building that has not been successful not only has it not been successful it's it's been in the news for all the wrong reasons right so why even take the chance of somebody that's part of that regime and and for so long and that's where subterfuge gets in maybe they they think they are more powerful i mean and and that's why head coaches come in they clean house there's rarely, yeah, very rarely, rarely are there leftovers or anybody they, they the, take on. The only guy that I remember on the coaching staff that was kept over and promoted was Richie Pettibone when, when Joe Gibbs came in in 1981. And he was elevated because I, I, and I'd forgotten this. He went under uh, the previous coach. He had been the defensive backfield coach, which is which, what Richie he played. was. And then he became the defensive coordinator. And what a job he did for the next 12 years or whatever. But he was the only one that I can remember on the coaching staff that was retained. Joe brought in everybody else was everybody he knew. So, you know, you wonder when and if that's going to happen. We but the reality know. is, John, they're behind the eight ball now, and that's why this year it is what it is because you've got you've got games staring you in the face. You've got a business operation that's got to go. So I think you're going to see a more gradual more measured approach right now because this is just so late it, on, on, starting on the business side take yeah. care take care of your fans first and foremost start winning back the hearts and minds of those that are and wh- while you've got and you've got them captivated right now and everybody's in a great mood so the football side it is what it is right you everybody's on tryout Everybody from Ron Rivera to Marty Herney to Martin Mayhew, including the new owners. Yes, I mean, if truth be known. Yes, I but mean, it's but it's their new baby, and this is, listen, you didn't get here overnight. You ain't going to get out of it overnight. So it's more going to take time. Well, if they win the Super Bowl this year, you'd pretty much think that they're out of it. <laughs> they, what kind of odds you want? Huh? <laughs> I just said if. But yeah, you know, everything you said is true there, and I can't help but thinking that uh, you know, like I said, that they. They're going to, like anything else, I mean, you talk about getting your, you know, your handcuffed from the start. I mean, 
they took over the training camp open the day that they got the keys to the to the car. <laughs> pretty, you might say, yeah, which pretty is, much. Which <laughs> I, you know, you, there's a lot of evaluation that goes on uh, during this period. But now something that's going on, and we talked about it last week, that has, I guess, according to you, I haven't been paying that much attention to it. And something that I had thought of was, you know, when when Whiplash brought back Joe Gibbs, I thought that that was really a high water mark. In fact, that was as high a water mark. If you think about it, even more than the, the the couple, the one, what was it, one postseason game they won? Did they win one or two? They won two. Point? They won two. Uh, that that from a public relation, from a feel good, from really energ energizing a base. It was another miracle that nobody saw coming. Yeah, I mean to get Joe to come out of retirement right. and Mr. You know, NASCAR and, guy, and Mr. The, you know, three Super Bowl trophies in the case. Yeah, got a piece of ownership there. with the Falcons, and that was a yeah. So, and basically, people are already way ahead of me. But I, the only thing I can think of that could top that, and it would top it, I would have to say this would be if they changed the name back to Redskins. Now, yes. I've thought about this, and I, I, I often thought why, the, and the, but we know stupidity and personality disorder it, it was a part of the old ownership, but why didn't somebody approach the Native Americans? And really, I mean, it, it was always rumored that, oh, we talked to them, and everybody says it's okay with them. Well, I know one thing. I can say it's okay with me, but, you know, when I see cash on the table, all of a sudden things get much more interesting, and I can't help but thinking that these guys that are taking this team over are probably creative enough to figure out a way to get, I don't know, government, I don't know, there used to be the Bureau of, of Indian Affairs, I don't know if that's, I, you know, things travel on, you hardly ever hear anything about it, but there's a lot of Native American corporations, there's a lot of uh, groups of Native Americans, and so I can't help but thinking that if if the current ownership now reached out to the, the Native American groups around the country, there's all kinds of corporations, there's a lot of uh, separate groups themselves, and try to come to some kind of consensus. And of course, I think that basically you would lease the name somehow from the Native Americans. Now, the, the problem with that to a certain extent, and, and I'm not going to pretend I know today, but I knew way back 50 years ago because I went to school in Lawrence and I took a class over at Haskell Institute, which was a Native American college that was funded, I guess, by the U.S. government, that I learned there that what like it was is basically there were all, when all this stuff started happening in the beginning of the countries, you know, and when the Europeans came over and started settling America, that there were all these different Native American nations that were actually in conflict with one another. Hundreds. So to get consensus of, of, of all, but, but you got to remember this is two, 200 years ago, so as time moves on, maybe there's a little bit more cohesion amongst these groups. But my guess is if, if, if they were willing to give make them one of the partners, add a partner to it, that maybe they could, you know, it would make everybody feel good because, you know, you would be definitely paying for, you know, pay as you go as opposed to just taking something for granted and turning your back on, you know. And if you, if many people have been, and when I was doing the outdoor show, I, you know, I had the, I guess, uh, the opportunity to see, you know, in Montana and some of these places, some of the, you know, the conditions that these Indian reservations, you know, what what they're like. And so I can't help but thinking that it would be a win-win, if you would. It would certainly really energize the fan base, and it would give something back to the people that you, you know, if you want to use the word, you know, basically just took the name and, you know, didn't offer to make any kind of compensation for it. Right. And, and, the, and the people that it truly affects versus those that have their faux outrage, if you will, that that. And at the time, and at the, and, and at the time, John, all of this was part. You heard me say this for years. This was death by a thousand cuts to get rid of Danny Boy, and the name change, pressured by the sponsors. And remember, everything started getting weird, right? With his with his partners and with Dwight Shar and Fred Smith and the guys, and then they wanted out. And he's withholding pay. You can go back and all, see all this trickle of all this stuff that I, again, I think the league was playing three dimensional chess. 
which is partly for the name change back then and the outrage that came with it from the fan base. So for the new guys to to figure this out, to see who are the people that this, if this is as offensive as everybody thinks and believes versus let's get to the bottom of it, right? And if there's something good to come out of it, even better. But let's get to the bottom of it. And explain what I'm not... Do your due diligence, and to your point of uh, if, if, if let's have feasible, the conversation. It, yeah, exactly. Let's have the conversation. Exactly. And that was it. Was always something was trotted out saying, "Well, we've talked to a few, you know, of these, you know, Native Americans, and they're fine with it." That's hardly really, as you would say, drill down and really get to the bedrock, right? Of you know, don't you love is, it when the, and that that term is? Uh, oh well, they said. Well, who's they? Yeah. Who's they? That was always what I Versus was told. you still have the Atlanta Braves, Kansas City Chiefs, Florida State Seminoles. There's still there's certain Cleveland Indians changed to the Guardians. Right. But again, have the bigger big boy and girl discussion here and get to the bottom of it. Well, and it's kind of fascinating, if you will. And now because the buzz that's been created. Shocking. By the fact that, you know, you would think perhaps that this would be anathema to even be discussing this, that there's a possibility that somebody would consider it. But I, like I said, I think there is a place there where if the right gestures were made and or the right contract signed, I think they could make it a reality and everybody would, would be happy. And like you said, the people that wouldn't, you know, if you're, you know, and, and even amongst Native Americans, I'm sure there are some that would still feel somehow, you know, that this is still unsatisfactory. But it, like anything else, but if you had the consensus of, and, and that's where you really need to, like you said, you'd have to get some, you know, really feel good about the input that you'd gotten from as many of the corporations and or movements that you got their blessing to do this and that you were paying your way. I think that, that, you know, that is the American way. We are a capitalistic society. So, I and like I said, to me, that would be the biggest thing that if they wanted to immediately, basically, create a groundswell, if you will, or a, a tsunami of support, <laughs> I can't think of anything better. I, I just And that's probably why it's being bandied around so much. Because people, there's no way, in my opinion, and this is a fact that they're ever going to keep the current name that's like dead i yeah that's dead, no no dead way arrival. that's that's french that's if, if, if john the redskins it was a bad and, name then and it's even a worse name now because it was given to you by a bad guy that left town you yeah. don't want anything to do you gotta it's slash and burn when it comes no, to that kind no of stuff. question about it and for what what uh the new owners have 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 bought and the memories and <laughs> which speaks to them growing up as young men here in this town and knowing knowing what the Redskins and, and your teammates and you guys accomplished for all those years to recapture that. So it's the fine line between is this a startup franchise and we got rid of everything that this guy ever touched or can we go back and capture what existed back in the 80s and the 90s and, and historically with this franchise. Well, and I think that that's exactly, you know, like we talked earlier, that that's what their job is right now is to figure it all out and, and make it happen on the field. They have inherited, you know, f the condition of the team as it is now with all the people and the personnel that, that, that's available. But now it's a matter of evaluation and moving into the future. And, I, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here to tell you that if there was anything – that uh, the team feels like that I could help out with, you know, I'm sure that there's some kind of an arrangement we could make that I would be happy to do what I can to uh, to make, bring this team back to the level that it once was, you know, and, and rebuild the structure. And I guess, you know, basically, I don't know if I would have to say probably it has been shaken all the way to the foundation. So maybe that's where the repairs begin at the foundation. So well put. I uh, I'd be in I'd, I'd be up for helping out if I can. You saying maybe a, a little phone call? Um, I will answer it if I see that you know, <laughs> Mitch, uh, Josh, Josh, Mark, Mark. Irvin. <laughs> I'm not going to give you my phone number here, but uh, you know you 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 figure out how to get a hold of me if you want to. But yeah, I'd be happy to help out. Todd, that's going to wrap it up for today. 
And uh, I just want to congratulate the new guys for their purchase. And uh, I look forward to seeing what all you're going to do with this. The bad guy has left town, and Rigo's about ready to leave the studio. So it is Rigo out. <laughs>